The original Super Mario Bros. slash Duck Hunt is the best-selling NES cartridge of all time, mostly thanks to being included in the action set, which was the most popular Nintendo bundle there was. Two games in one, what a deal. And I think for most people my age, this was the first Nintendo game we ever touched. I remember when I was a kid, what really surprised me the most about Super Mario Bros. was how big it was. I was used to arcade games usually being a single screen. You tried to get the most points you could, and eventually you beat it or got a game over. They really weren't that long. I remember I could beat all the stages of Donkey Kong in like 15 minutes. So the very first time I slid down that flagpole, I remember thinking, oh, that was a fun game. Let's go again and see if I can get all the coins this... World 1-2? Oh, th there's more. Wow. My very first cutscene. Wow, it's totally different! And I gotta keep my power-ups level to level? I must have died dozens of times the first day I played this game. But the motivation of seeing what the next stage would be like, and getting further and further each time always kept me coming back. And on that quest to save the princess, I honed my skills stomping Goombas, hurling fireballs, and perfecting my flagpole jumps. Until I made it all the way to the end. That's right. World 1-4. You hear that music? Yeah, that's how you knew this just got real. We're jumping over lava, avoiding fireballs, palms sweating, eyes focused on the screen. And now I'm thinking, I just beat Bowser! That's like the boss of the game! Now the princess is rescued and... Who, or what, is that? Some weird mushroom person wearing a vest? Telling me I'm in the wrong castle? Great first impression, Toad. When that screen for World 2-1 came up, I knew I wasn't going to be beating this game in a day, or even in a week. Little did I know how much adventure was in store for me. Snow levels, water worlds, secret blocks, hidden warp zones. Caring about points and high scores had now taken a back seat to exploring every inch of these worlds, a mindset that would come in very handy very quickly. Today, let's pay tribute by recreating some of the most classic Mario moments from that original game. And as long as we're creating some retro Marios, we might as well throw in a piece from his very first appearance in Donkey Kong, just for fun. pieces are so simple to make, but look so good together. They're on 5 by 7 inch canvases, and I really like that you can display them in so many different ways to fit perfectly into whatever wall space you're working with. But we're not done yet. We've got a whole other game to try. Now this was a bit more what I was used to. You and your trusty dog scare up some ducks and take your best shot. 
Man, just hearing these sound effects brings up so many memories. Duck Hunt is a pretty straightforward game, kind of repetitive, but unique in that it used that zappered light gun. And I always thought it was funny that the ducks just look annoyed that they've been caught and shot. Hearing these sound effects brings up so many memories. So many memories. So many memories. Why? Why does the dog laugh at me? He seems happy when we get the ducks. Why is he also happy when we don't? Whose side are you on, dog? I'll tell you this, though. The longevity of this nameless dog's career is a testament to how memorable he is. This game came out in 1985, and he's still popping up in modern-day video games and movies. And now, Perler Beat Artwork. I definitely prefer the Double Duck Victory Dog design here, but that infuriating laugh is just too iconic not to pay tribute to as well. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. Click the pieces right there for today's patterns. I hope you have fun creating some of your favorite retro Mario scenes. See you soon.